Hello everybody, in this video we'll be talking about the derivative of a matrix. And as I say that, I kind of have to admit that that's not exactly the terminology for what we're going to be doing. It's just that a lot of students think of it as taking the derivative of a matrix. So that'll become more clear in just a second. Um, before we get into the derivative of a matrix, let's go into some familiar territory. What is the derivative, ddx, of the function kx, where k is a constant? A lot of you would probably find this pretty trivial. You would just say, oh, this is k, right? Okay, so what's the derivative ddx of kx squared? You guys say, okay, this is still pretty trivial. It's just 2kx. These problems aren't very hard because we're just taking the derivative of a function. Well, let's jump over here and let's look at this matrix A, which is just 1, 2, 3, 4, the 2 by 2 matrix. Now let's think about the operation A times x, where x is, of course, a 2 by 1 vector for this all to work out. So what is the derivative of this? Well, that doesn't really seem as clear as these easier problems we did on that side of the board, right? But at the same time, there should be some kind of definition for this because a times x is a function, after all. We're taking the vector x and we're running it through this linear transformation A. Remember, A matrix is just a linear transformation. So we're taking this vector A, running it through linear transformation A, and we're getting some output back. So since it's a function, it should also have a derivative, I think, right? Um, yes, it should. It's just a matter of defining it properly. So before we worry about the derivative part, let's look at what a times x actually means. So we're going to write it all out in longhand notation because it's going to help us out. a times x is simply 1, 2, 3, 4, and x itself has two entries, x1, x2. Now if we go ahead and do this matrix uh, and vector multiplication, we get x1 plus 2x2 on the top, right? On the bottom, we're going to get 3x1 plus 4x2. Okay, so that is what a times x is equal to. Now for uh, terminology, let's go ahead and give names to these two functions we've created. Let's call this one f1 of x1 and x2. And let's call this one f2 of x1 and x2. Okay, so we see that that makes sense. Uh, both are functions of two variables, x1 and x2, and they're two separate functions. So f of f1 is x1 plus 2x2, and f2 is 3x1 plus 4x2. So some of you are thinking, why did I just make this more complicated than it had to be? Well, now we're going to go ahead and define what it means, what this means, d, dx of ax. How do we actually define that? Here is how we'll define that. Let me get rid of this stuff right here. So we're going to define this as a new matrix, which is going to be uh, done in terms of derivatives that we know how to take, ones similar to the ones we did on that side of the board just before. So I'm going to enumerate them out and then describe them. So we have df1, dx1. We have df1, dx2. Then we have df2, dx1. And lastly, we have df2, dx2. Okay, so that's a lot of derivatives, but we know how to take each of these. For example, let's look at the first one. The first one just says, what's the derivative of function f1, which is this guy, with respect to x1? Well, here's function f1. What's the derivative of this function with respect to x1? That's really easy. It's just 1, right? Because this part cancels out because we're not interested in x2. And the coefficient of x1 is just 1. So this is going to be equal to 1. Next part, what's the derivative of that same function with respect to x2? In this case, we care about the 2. So this is going to be equal to 2. The next question is, what's the derivative of f2, the second function down here, with respect to x1? Uh, that's 3. And then this last one will be 4, because it's the derivative of the second function with respect to x2. So we get that the derivative of this linear transformation a times x. So uh, here's where I want to say that we're not really taking the derivative of a matrix. We're taking the derivative of this linear transformation a times x. For example, taking the derivative of a matrix doesn't really make any sense because it's not a linear transform. That's kind of like taking the derivative of a constant, which would be 0. Um, so we're taking the derivative of this linear transformation right here, which happens to involve matrix a. So that means that after we've done this 
derivative, we have found that the answer is 1, 2, 3, 4. Where did you see that matrix before? That was the original matrix A, of course. So that means that after all of this work, we have found that ddx of this linear transformation, A times x, is equal to A. And the reason I think this is so awesome is because it has a very clear analog to this problem we did in the beginning, where we did ddx kx is equal to k. It's, this k back then was a scalar, like a number like 1 or 2, and we found that its derivative was just that number itself. In the same way, this matrix A is not a scalar, but it's a collection of scalars in a little box, and we find that when we take the derivative of A times x, we get that collection of scalars in the little box back, which is awesome. It's, it's just kind of elegant that way. Now before we close this video, let's look at one more uh, matrix-related derivative, which is a little bit tougher. Um, but we're going to look at it because it shows up a lot in our data science videos we'll be looking at in a bit. So here's a new linear transformation. Um, we have x transpose ax. So here's our new function that we want to take the derivative of. Before we take the derivative, let's try to understand this function. Okay. So in this case, we're going to leave a in a more general format. We're not going to give any concrete values, so we can do this in a more mathematical way. So x will be x1, x2. So that transpose just takes the long way of the vector and squishes it into its flat uh, version right here. So let me write this a little bit bigger. We have x1, x2. a will be a11, a12, a21, a22. That's the four elements of a. And of course, the x is going to be x1 and x2. Okay. So I took that uh, transformation and I wrote it out in its long format. Now let's work it out here. Let's do these two first since we just did something like that. So we're going to get A11x1 plus A12x2. We're going to get A21x1 plus A22x2. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to do here, I'm realizing this now, but I want to make sure that this matrix is symmetric. Um, it doesn't have to be symmetric, it's just that the um, application we'll be looking at it in, specifically principal component analysis, next, it will be symmetric. So that's going to help us understand. So instead of having A12 and A21, let's just call this guy A. Now the matrix is symmetric. Okay. So that means that this guy and this guy. Okay. So now we just have to apply this to that, which is simple as multiplying x1 by the top and then adding x2 times the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that here. That's going to look like a11 x1. It's going to look like a11 x1 squared. Then we're going to get a plus a x1 x2, right? Yeah. Then we're going to get the bottom times x2. So we're going to get a x1 x2. And then we're going to get x2 times that, so a22 x2 squared. By the way, if um, the pace is too fast for you, please take a minute to pause and convince yourself everything on this board is accurate. Okay. Um, once you've convinced yourself of that, let's move on. We see we have a ax1 x2 term here and also here, so we can just put two of them, simplify that. And the reason we were able to do that is because of the symmetricness of that matrix. Okay. Cool. So now we have this guy, and we'll call this some function of x1 and x2. Let me erase this stuff here. Now what does it mean for us to take the derivative d dx of this linear transformation right here? Well, in this case we only have one function, so it's going to be as simple as df dx1 and then df dx2. So we only have one function. Okay, so we only have one function, so we only care about the derivative of this function with respect to x1 and also the derivative of that function with respect to x2. So let me pause here before we actually work out the answer. 
in general, you're going to basically write out the complete form of whatever function you're taking the derivative of. Um, here's a secret for you. Once you've done enough of these, you don't have to write out the complete form. You can kind of just see the patterns, um, as we'll see in a second. But for now, you'd write out the complete form. You would see how many different functions you have. In this case, we just have one. In the previous case, we had an f1 and an f2, both of which were functions of the two variables. And then you would take the number of functions times the number of variables, and you would create a new matrix, which is basically every pairwise derivative. So if you had, um, let's say, three different functions and four different variables, you would have a three by four matrix. And uh, one element of that matrix would be what's df3 with respect to dx2. And you would have every other combination. And that's basically what taking the derivative of some uh, operation that involves a matrix means. Back to our scheduled program. What is df1 with respect to x1? Well, that is going to be uh, 2a1x1, 2a11x1, plus 2ax2, 2ax2. What is df with respect to dx2? Uh, that's going to be 2ax1, and then 2a22. 2a22x2. Yeah, okay, cool. So that is, I think that's falling off the page a little bit, but you know what, let me just rewrite it. Cause, so that's the derivative there. It looks a little bit ugly. Can we clean it up? We can definitely pull a 2 out. Two's coming out right there. So that's a little bit cleaner. Now what else can we do? We can notice that this guy is actually just the multiplication of, if I leave this a11 here, I leave this a22 here, I leave this a and this a here, and I pull out the x1 and the x2, does that fit on the page? Yes, it does. Then I can take out these x's here and these plus signs, and that's the same transformation right there. Go ahead and redo it, redo the multiplication if you want to see that the previous step was equal to the current step, um, but this is true here. And what is a11, a, a, a22? Well, that's just the original matrix A, right? I know we've erased it, but that's the original matrix A. So all in all, we have 2AX. Let me write that. Is equal to 2AX. Let me get rid of everything else on here except the result itself. So we found that the derivative with respect to X of this transformation, A transpose X, uh, A transpose, sorry, x transpose ax is equal to 2ax. And why is this awesome? This is awesome not only because we're going to use this thing in our principal component and future videos, it's awesome because it's an analog to the first thing we looked at in this video. So we looked at a uh, derivative of, with respect to x of kx squared, this quadratic, is equal to 2kx. In the same way, this is sort of like the quadratic of matrix operations because we have an x here and an x here. I know it doesn't look exactly the same, but it's kind of like the analog. And its derivative is very similar. It's 2 times a, in this case it was k, times x. So again, we see some really elegant analogs between the derivatives we know and love and these new, new matrix derivatives, okay? So we're going to be using that pretty heavily in the principal component video and future videos, okay? So, until next time.